Welcome to a postcast after the Utah Jazz defeat the Denver Nuggets. You know this is a big one because Ron actually got his coat off tonight. <laughs> he must have gotten a little hot and a little bothered tonight for Ron to actually get his, his coat off tonight. So much to talk about. The Jazz coming from behind, down 16 in this game. And will their way back. You've asked for a fight, Ron. That's been your thing all year long. You said, I know we're more talented than we were a year ago. But does this team have fight? Al Jefferson showed you that fight in the second quarter. Yeah, he absolutely did. I mean, that's when it got started. Jazz ended up tying with the with, with the Nuggets in that second quarter with 30 points apiece. But more importantly, Al Jefferson, in the fight you're talking about, he got fouled in that second quarter. He ended up taking six free throws in that second quarter strictly because going to the basket and being very aggressive. That got his offensive game going, I thought. And as you mentioned during that broadcast, you could see uh, that he was uh, very upset with the way the Jazz started off this first quarter, getting outscored 35-24. to 24. There are so many happenings in this game to talk about. I'll write about a bunch of them and empty the noggin because there's too many. Andre Gidala getting ejected. Uh, the, the rotations by Ty Corbin. The Jazz clutching up and getting that run in the third quarter to regain the game. But Derek Favors free throw shooting late was a huge part of it as well. I don't have it written down, but I believe he hits three of four down the stretch to, to really seal this game. And, and these are huge moments for him, but defensively he changed the game as well as they finally stopped letting the Nuggets get into the paint. Yeah, he was three of four. But not only three or four, those were clutch free throws. Ooh. I mean, those were huge free throws, and he was very comfortable there. That wasn't didn't look like they were nervous free throws. They were soft enough, and, and, and they ended up making them. Now, the lineup that Charles Corbin had out there on the floor, uh, he, he stuck with it. I mean, he didn't make a substitution just because he felt that he had to get certain guys back into the lineup. He had guys out there on the floor that were playing well, and he continued to go with them. Second half, the Jazz pulled the Denver Nuggets to 13 of 36 shooting. And here's maybe the note of the night. In the first quarter of the game, the Denver Nuggets had 28 points in the paint. In the second half, the Denver Nuggets had 18. They had 10 fewer points in the paint in the second half than they had in the entire first quarter. What changed? Well, the change is the fact that the Jazz started protecting the basket. You see the offensive rebounds there for, for the ended up with 13 apiece. But they start protecting, and, 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 and they cut down on the fast breaks. Uh, the Jazz started to score, which means very a few fast break opportunities for, for the Denver Nuggets. And, you know, when something like that happens and, and a team is dominating you like that, you know, you, you make adjustments at, at the half and, and you go with it. We talked about the adjustments that the Denver Nuggets usually make at the beginning of the third quarter where they've outscored the last three opponents 40-6 to six at the beginning of the ballgame. The Jazz hung right in there, did not let the Denver Nuggets get going in that third quarter like they opened the ballgame with. And you really saw the depth of this team because the, the surge, the 14 to nothing run, Randy Foy, Marvin Williams are mm-hmm. making the big plays inside that run. Paul's a part of it. Al's a part of it. But yet they close the game with a different group, Derek Favors. 10 points, 4 rebounds, 2 blocks it just in the second half of the game. Damari Carroll, didn't, it looks like he didn't have a very good second half. He went 0 for 5, but he brought the energy and changed this game defensively. So it was a completely different group that finished it. We saw the depth of the Jazz. Maybe Denver on the back end of a back-to-back played into it. I don't know. But you saw the, the, the depth of this Jazz team finally coming to fruition and being helpful for them in the night. And, and my key player here, I, I think, is, is Damari Carroll. I, I really like the way he what he gives to this team and the way he plays. And, and, and he took nine shots in 22 minutes. You know, that, that's comfortable. That, that's what a guy needs. He had five rebounds, three of them on the offensive glass. And so you look at a stat sheet, he only had seven points, and you think, you know, whole hum. But the energy level that he brings, the, the defense that he plays, I mean, that is just, that's awesome there, I think, for a coach. They have a guy that can come in the ball game and give you just that. Andre Udala gets ejected. That obviously is a huge part of this yeah. game. Well, you know, anytime you lose a player like him, he's their leading scorer, uh, and, and you can always go to him. The Jazz were having problems defending him. He was 5 for 9 in 24 minutes of play. He had three rebounds, four assists there for Udala uh, in, in, in uh, 24 minutes of play. So losing him was a key, and thank goodness he did lose them because the Jazz ended up coming back winning the ballgame. And in the ongoing conversation that seems to be happening every night with a team that's 12 players deep, it's the question of the rotation and how Tyrone Corbin's going to use them and what he's going to do. We saw something different tonight. For the second time now, I believe, in three games, Paul Millsap does not play the fourth quarter of the game. Derek Favors closes. Derek was fabulous in this one as well as he was fabulous in Sacramento. You're, you're just seeing Ty play the guy who's hot. The question is, how does everyone handle this? 
can they stay engaged into what they need to when the minutes move like this and to some extent you're not playing the role you thought you were going to play? Well, you hope that they're professional enough to, to understand that what was going on out there on the floor and he didn't want to change things. Uh, you, you have to be professional with it. But the, first and foremost, it's the coach's job to win a basketball game. And he has to make decisions that sometimes aren't very comfortable for everyone. And that decision was made tonight. Uh, they got the job done. So you can argue the point that Paul is, is a valuable clog of this, of this team. Uh, he needs to be in the basketball game at certain times. Might be true but not tonight. Marvin Williams didn't play the fourth quarter either. Yeah. It's very clear, pun intended in this next comment, that Tyrone Corbin is not playing any favor it's <laughs> along the way. On that note, <laughs> see, those things are funny when you come back from 16 and win. The rest of you are cringy. The Utah Jazz win at 105-103 in a clutch. We didn't even talk about the final play. Quickly, what happened on the final play? Ty Lawson <laughs> dribbles the left side, got... <laughs> <laughs> that sums it up. God. If you're not watching on YouTube and you're listening on the podcast, Ron just took a gun to his head. He pretty much, he brain cramped yeah. is the way to say it. Threw yeah. it fast at the end of the ball game, and the Jazz win it 105-103. We'll be back home after a road trip. Join myself solo in New Orleans as Ron will be on TV, and then Ron and I will be with you in Oklahoma City as well as in Houston. Have a good night. Jazz win it 105-103. Be safe.